Hey guys, welcome to another Color Connection with Amber. Today I'm sharing two ways you can add watercolor and doodle to your projects, whether you prefer freehand like this, or the use of stencils to aid your watercolor along with stamps to add that doodled artsy look. There's a project here for you. The lovely Ashley Cornell is hosting the July 2020 All to New Inspiration Challenge. Here's her photo and color scheme that we have for this month. It's so beautiful and I'm so excited to share these projects with you. So to start off with, I'm going to mix some colors. Now I've sped up a lot of the color mixing because it took me quite a bit of time. If you guys follow me, then you know that for the most part, I use the colors straight out of the All to New Artist watercolor 24 pan set and that's because I really love vibrant colors but what I wanted to doodle today was a eucalyptus sprig the silver dollar type which are very light in color almost like a super light teal um, it really went along well with Ashley's color scheme so I've started off with a piece of watercolor paper here and I just dropped in a simple teardrop shape and then dropped in some of this muted kind of greenish teal color that I have going on here. And you can actually see the colors that I mixed over there separating a little bit, which is perfect for the eucalyptus leaves. So I'm gonna be adding, you can see that over on my phone, I have an inspiration photo. I just Googled silver dollar eucalyptus sprig and just picked one that I thought had a good shape and might fit on a card front, wasn't too busy. And I'm not completely copying it. What I'm doing is I'm spreading out my leaves because I don't want any of them to overlap until they're dry. So once the leaves are dry, then you can go back in and add another leaf on top of it, which adds a really cool look because the watercolors are transparent. Now here what I'm doing is I'm laying down kind of like a, a skinny oval. It's almost like a kidney bean shape because I wanted to add some perspective to this leaf. I wanted it to look like you're seeing it from a side view. Now I've let the panel dry and I'm putting one more leaf down at the bottom that's gonna overlap that one leaf. At this point I had played around with the idea of just painting in extra leaves between those three leaves on the left, but ultimately what I decided to do was doodle them instead. I wanted to add some black to the design and so I thought doodling would be a good way to go. So here I am mixing um, Delectable Delights, Coffee Break, and Tea Party to kind of make that peachy pink brown that we saw in the color inspiration and I'm just adding in some really fine stems here. So one of the things I wish I had done was curve the stems a little bit more so that they look like they were bent, but mine are kind of stiff looking. Totally okay, we're going with it. But if I were to do this again, I might add a little bit of a bend to those um, leaves. Now, you can see on the leaf that I did on the very bottom right that it wasn't dry all the way, and so my pink stem kind of burst out and started to blend. So basically what I'm gonna do is just have the other leaves match. So I'm adding a little bit more of the green to wet the leaf because those leaves are already dry. And then I'll drop in a little bit more of that pink brown to get it to kind of burst and blend into the green, just so that it has a more cohesive look. I really like that look rather than just the, you know, sharp line of the stem. So I was okay to do that. Now here, I don't know if you can see it, but I penciled in another leaf just so I would have an idea of where I'm going with my doodle. I have a Sakura Micron pen here, it's an 01, and I'm feeling the paper to see if it's cool because if you notice, my pen stroke at the bottom of that leaf is kind of feathered out because the paper is still wet. Now, of course, I don't stop drawing, I just keep going, but I'm gonna add the stem onto this. I'll connect this and add the stem, and I'll add a few of the detail lines to the top, but I won't finish this leaf. I will let it dry before I complete this leaf. So this is about as far as my plan went, so you'll see me pause intermittently to kind of figure out an idea of where I wanna go. If you look to the left of where I'm drawing right now, you can actually see the stem that I drew in with a pencil to start with. 
totally didn't go with that. Went with something different, kind of moved everything over just a little bit. I think my leaf was a little more curved than what I had originally drawn. And so here I'm just gonna add in some details. Now, I have such a light touch with my pen that it's not a complete stroke. It's kind of skipping over the paper and leaving some empty spots which adds more of an artistic feel to it. So I'm like, literally, I'm just grazing it over the surface. Now the bottom half of that leaf is still wet. So I'm gonna move on to another leaf down here at the bottom. For the rest of these leaves, I don't have them drawn in. I'm just gonna freestyle it and see how things go. So here, this is another kind of like side glance to this leaf. Then I'll just add in some lines and I kind of add some towards the bottom, then I add some going up towards the top, and then I meet in the middle with my strokes. For me, it's just a little bit easier that way. And if you can overlap some of your strokes, I'll try and point that out when I do it, you're gonna get a deeper, darker line. So see how I'm starting at the same place right there and it creates that dark shadow of a line? It's nice to do that and start at the one insertion point in some of the areas so that you get almost a wrinkle effect to your leaf. If you are interested in this type of artwork and you're maybe new to this series, I'm a certified Zentangle teacher and on Alta New Academy, I have a class called Zentangle for card makers where there's more of this. I incorporate Zentangle patterns into stamp designs. So if you're interested in that, and if I'm able to, I'll link it in the top right corner. If I can't link it in the top right corner, then I'll add it in the description down below so that you can check that out. So this is my third and final leaf here. I only added three to this design. And here I'll show you again how to create that wrinkle. So see how I'm starting from the same insertion point and that creates that dark area of ink where the ink overlaps. The rest of my design in the stems are looking a little bit bare. So I just added touches of ink to those. It, again, I kind of skipped over the surface. They're not complete lines. This technique is called ink and wash when you have watercolor and you add ink design to it or vice versa. I think it's a really beautiful look. So now we're gonna add our sentiment. So this panel has completely dried and I have the statement flowers here. This is one of my favorite sets, so it's usually front and center in my crafty organization. So I'm stamping Hello Dearest Friend in Obsidian Pigment Ink and this is a textured watercolor paper, so you will need to stamp it more than once in order to get into those nooks and crannies. Even with the obsidian ink, that's just normal when you have a heavily textured paper. And I decided that I should add some splatter just to give the background a little something extra. I'm gonna use that pinkish brown that we used from our Inspiration Color Palette, and we'll just splatter that on with a small brush. And here's the finished card. I added a few satin gold sequins and I really love how this turned out, you guys. I love how the pink blended with the green and blue and how the green and blue kind of separated not only on my palette over to the left, but also on the leaves. You can see that separation of the blue and the green and I think it's so perfect for eucalyptus. So now, if you're not comfortable with freestyle yet, let's do a little stencil assisted watercolor here. So this is the brand new cloud scene stencil, which I think is awesome, you guys. Now I'm actually not using it for clouds per se. This almost ends up looking like a bit of a marbled background, although I guess you could say it's clouds. They're green and pink, so that's a little unusual, but you know, if you follow me, you know, I don't kind of stick with the, the sky is blue and flowers can't be green so i like to go outside of the box with our colors so i put down the darkest pigment right at the edge of the stencil and i don't have any adhesive on the stencil um, i'm going to use the most pigmented down right at the edge of the stencil and then i'm going to blend that out with a damp brush so there really isn't any more pigment left on my brush i kind of rinse it off and then i'm bringing that up to the bottom edge of the stenciled area above it now I love this green. Again, you can see a little bit of the paint, a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the green, but I felt like this needed definitely another color to break it up. So of course we're gonna bring in our pink. 
Now my pink is a little more watered down at this point, so I'm just gonna grab some of that color that's above it to deepen it up a little bit, especially down at the bottom. And one thing I should note is once I take the stencil away, I'm careful to pick it straight up so I don't drag it across the bottom, but I did do that a few times and just wiped it off with, um, wiped off the stray pigments from the paper with paper towel, but I cleaned the stencil with a paper towel in between setting it back down. Um, because there's wet pigment on the edge of that stencil, you wanna make sure that you dry it off in between applications. So here I took that panel and just used a rectangle stacking die to cut it so that I could have two cards, because you know I love a twofer. So I'm gonna use both panels and I pulled out the Weekend Doodles stamp set. So if you're not comfortable doodling, this is a great stamp set to get a similar look. And so what I decided to do Initially, I was thinking I would just have the frame go over this, but then I decided it would be nice to have that image continue on to our clouds and have a complete picture. So I put that in and I had my stamp fortunately in the same place and went ahead and stamped that on the frame. And for this one, I'm just gonna do a simple sentiment. So both of those sentiments are from Weekend Doodles. I'll pop up the frame on some double-sided tape. Super simple there. And I'm going to add satin white sequins to both of these cards. And here is the finished card here. So this cloud stencil really can be used for more than just clouds. Of course, it would be beautiful ink blended with some clouds. I also did another watercolor panel separately that looked a lot more like clouds. I think if you just add a little more space and gradation of color in between those areas, you get more of a cloud effect. Um, and here's the three cards together. I hope that you guys enjoyed these projects today and it inspires you to submit some projects to the Inspiration Challenge. You can link your projects on the Inspiration blog post. I'll have a link to that down below or you can hashtag Altenew Challenge on social media to enter the contest as well. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing liking and ringing that bell so you don't miss any new inspiration. Here's a couple more videos for you before you leave and I'll see you real soon.